So I'm going to keep going with Jan van Denberg's incredible crash course on stars. And uh, he's talking here about the 88 constellations. In 1945, he writes, the International Astronomical Union, the IAU, officially marked the limits of the constellations and which stars belong to which constellation. By 1970, 88 constellations were universally accepted, in addition to smaller star groups, which were called asterisms. Asterisms are groups of stars that also form a pattern in the night sky. They differ from constellations in the way that they make up part of a constellation, or that group includes stars from more constellations. For example, the Big Dipper is an asterism while its seven stars are part of the constellation Ursa Major, the Great Bear. He's showing it here. Following the IAU, that is the International Astronomical Union, following the International Astronomical Union vision, it means that all ever founded sky patterns, that is all the sky patterns ever found, I suppose, which are not mentioned in the list of 88 constellations, should be called asterisms. Since, since 2016, a working group of the IAU, called the WGSN, is listing names of stars. However, that doesn't mean that there is a rigid list or a given name on that list that has to be followed. All the names of constellations and stars are unofficial, since they have their roots in many varied cultures and languages. You can even choose your own star or constellation and give it a name. One thing, paying for registration of such a name made up by yourself to a certain star, which seems to be offered on some internet sites, do realize that nobody will ever use that name. Frowny face, smiley face. So, As a last background info for better understanding, constellations and stars and planets, and this is under the, under the header, longitude and latitude. Constellations and stars and planets have two positions. They have an ecliptical longitude, which measure, measures their positions east or west of the vernal point, spring, uh, which is along the ecliptic, right? You take the kind of the, the ecliptic, the equator of the Earth, and then you, you slice it this way. Those are the longitudes, east or west of the vernal point spring. In astrological terminology, this is the zodiacal position of a planet or a star. When we say gate 21 is at 10 degrees Aries, we're describing its position as being 10 degrees east of the vernal point, uh, giving it an ecliptical longitude. Interesting um, side effect of the translation here is the, the gendering her of the gate. So he refers to gate, gate as a female. Stars also have an ecliptical latitude, which is their position north or south, or above or below the ecliptic line. The planets orbiting around our sun never get very far above below it. But stars obviously are. Constellations are astronomically divided north or south of the ecliptic line without a zodiacal construction in between. Astrology and human design approve the construct of 12 signs projected on the celestial line, called Zodiac. So I think what he's trying to say here is just, we're never really, you know, the planets are just going along the ecliptic, mostly. I mean, they're a little bit off, but the planets are pretty much going along the ecliptic. And, um, you know, because, because of that, we can kind of divide along the ecliptic, which is along the equator. Um, and it was just along the line that we trace around, you know, the same line that we're tracing around the sun, the other planets roughly are. Of course, this is not the case entirely. I mean, they're kind of off. They're at various angles. And that accounts for things like retrograde motion, the apparent retrograde motion. We call it retrograde, but really it's only apparent because it just looks like it's going backwards, right? 
And so um, that, that kind of thing is accounted for. But well, I guess what he's saying here is he's really, um, he's pointing out that the stars can be quite far off. Right? The stars are not along the ecliptic. Because the stars are in three-dimensional space, so they could be towards the north or south pole, so to speak, compared to where we are. So, um, and the path that, that we're on. And that's an interesting point because, you know, I was born with my ascendant at 26 degrees Taurus, which is quote-unquote conjunct algal. But algal is really far off the ecliptic which means it didn't really look conjunct. I mean, you I couldn't see it. It would have been, I think it was actually going through the earth at the time of my birth. So it's like, if you want to know what star you were born under, right, to be born under a star, people say I was born under a fixed sign. I was born under this star. I was born under that star. That's different. You can't just look, you know, you have to actually figure out what star was overhead at that time. And there are ways of doing that. There are absolutely ways of doing that. So I think that's kind of what he's saying um, in general. It's just this, we're talking, we're giving an ecliptical longitude. There's 360 degrees. We divide the ecliptic into 360 degrees, and this, these are the longitudes. And there's also an ecliptical, I mean, at least in terms of its um, degrees, minutes, seconds value. There's also an ecliptical latitude, which is the position north or south that is above or below the ecliptic line towards the north or south pole. The planets orbiting around our sun never get very far above or below it, but the stars obviously are. Constellations are astronomically divided north and south, right? But it's not like we have a system that says, oh, it's further north, so it's, you know, there's no division that way. There's only a division this way. That is what, that's what he's saying. The division is, these are, these are longitudes, and there's no latitude division in astrology or in human design or in any system that really but you know it's an interesting point astrology and human design approve the construct of 12 signs projected on the celestial line the celestial equator which is just the equator projected outward right um or the i mean it's yeah so anyway astrology and human design approve the construct of 12 signs projected on the celestial line called zodiac. Now we get to the nodes. So this is an interesting one. Um, I think I'll save this for next time. This one, uh, let, let's do, let's look at nodes next time. For now, just kind of, we learned a little bit. We learned about asterisms today. We learned about constellations today. And really, it's interesting, and we kind of learned a little bit about longitude, latitude, and the ecliptic, and where stars actually are, which tend to be above or below, so that um, it really is, it's hard to visualize this stuff. In fact, when I was at the Northwest Astrological Conference a few years ago, I met this guy, Kent Bai, who was working on virtual reality for astrology. Really, really cool stuff. And what he wanted to be able to do was, you know, pinpoint any time and place and put you there. And you could look up at the sky and see the sky as it was at that point. And that would just be really helpful because when we're visualizing a lot of this, it's really hard sometimes, uh, even for those of us with a strong three-dimensional visual sense that we have ease rotating objects in our mind's eye and so on, it's still hard to get a sense sometimes when we're talking about astronomy and these complex astronomical subjects.